So first of all, we want to share with you this process that we found talking about cross multiplication or the cross product. That's what we looked at in the last video. So we're going to use this same idea um, to do the cross product. And where is it? There it is. Okay, so I first have to make this and it tells us to write the mixed number into an improper fraction. So remember we had to do 2 times 3 plus 1 it's going to be 6 plus 1 is 7, so we have 7 over 2 and 19 over 6. The next thing it tells us is to cross multiply up the diagonal line. So we're starting with the 6 and we're going up to the 7. 6 times 7 is 42. And I'm going to do the other one. I'm going to go 2 and up to the 19. 2 times 19, and I'm going to think about that as 2 times 20, which is 40 and then take those two away because 19 is just one away from 20. Okay, it's 38. And this last step tells us that whichever um, fraction has the bigger product over it is the bigger fraction. So that's telling me since 42 is bigger than 38 that 3 and a half is actually bigger than 19 over 6. That was pretty slick. That was a really, that was a fast way to do that, Ms. Peterson. So we like that way better than our standard um, comparing. So make sure you try this when you are practicing and um, ask for help if you need it. Next, we've got, we're have got we going to look at a couple ways to do this problem. Now, we are discussing it and um, mentally you can look at this, but we want to make sure that we show our work. Okay, Being able to check our answer is where I'll actually come back and show that. Um, so first of all, to stay with what we've been doing is getting everything into improper fractions. So we're going to go 2 times 1 plus 1 so remember that's going to be negative 3 over 2. I have negative 3 over 2, negative 5 over 4, and negative 11 over 6. Now just pointing out, this negative is here and this negative is up with a 5. There we go. So it doesn't matter how you write it, they're both a negative fraction. Okay, so first of all, I need to find out what my least common denominator is. And we've got a 2, a 4, and a 6. And if we step through it, um, 2, Four, well that would work for two and four, but four wouldn't work for six, six isn't gonna work, but they all multiply into 12. So it's two times six to get 12. Remember to do the same thing to the top, negative three times six is negative 18. Now we've got negative five over four. Again, we're making it into twelfths. It's four times three to get 12. So we're going to do the same thing, negative 5 times 3. And again, that's going to be negative 15. And last, we've got negative 11 over 6. And we're going to make that into twelfths. 6 times 2. So it's going to be negative 11 times 2, which is negative 22. So when I'm looking at this, um, I've got my 0. Remember that it's negative 1, negative 2. I'm going to 3, 4, 5, right? We're going to do 10, 15. I'm going to put my 20 down here. Negative 20, negative 15, negative 10. All right, just spacing it out. Make sure that we can see that that's a negative 5. So when I'm looking at this, I'm going to look at what's closest to 0. And I'm going to go through and place my numbers on my number line. So we've got negative 18. Now what I'm doing is I'm just forgetting about the denominator. The denominator right now doesn't matter. I want to see which number is going to be closest to zero. So I'm going to look at negative 18, negative 15, and negative 22. So negative 18 is going to go uh, about here, right? And negative 15 is going to go right here. Negative 22 well, is after the 20, so it's going to be over here. Now when I look at that, this right here is going to be closest to zero, so that is the biggest fraction. So again, when I'm looking, um, I want to look at how it's telling me to do it. I'm going from least to greatest when I'm ordering. So the furthest one away from zero is negative 22 over 12, which was negative 11 over 6. Okay, so that's my smallest fraction because it's the furthest away from zero. Next, I've got negative 18, which is right here and that was negative one and a half. Again, that's in the middle. It's not closest to zero. Negative one half. 
and last I'm going to have my negative 5 over 4. Oh, right, negative 1 and a half, sorry. And that's a terrible negative sign, but you're with me. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. So just looking at this answer, I'm kind of evaluating a couple of things. First of all, um, it's like the reverse of what I would think for positive numbers. Because when it's positive, I would have said 15 was the biggest, and then 18, and then 22. But because it's negative, the numbers are going the opposite way away from zero. So make sure you pay really special attention to that. Yeah. I like, like go ahead. sorry, Miss Peterson. Um, secondly, looking at this, 1 and a half to 5 over 4 and 11 over 6. Um, if I was to think about this, this is um, negative 1 and a half is right between 1 and 2. It's right in the middle. Negative 5 fourths is the same as like 1 and a fourth. So when I'm thinking about that, that's less than half, right? That's less than halfway to 2. And 11 6, well, 6 goes almost goes into 11 two times. So this is getting really close to negative 2. So you can kind of think about and then you're just verifying your work here because remember that we have to write down the problem and show our work in math class. Okay, I do want to go over another way to show it because there are lots of ways to do it. This is staying really consistent and it's really good to build a pattern, um, something that you always do when, where we are changing um, the mixed number into an improper fraction. But you can do this mathematically another way. So looking at this one, I've got my negative one and a half, and I'm going to leave it there. One and a half. Negative five fourths. Okay, so there's negative one, and there's going to be one left after I take the four out of there. And then I'm going to have negative one and five six. Remember that I'm looking at six goes into eleven once, and there's five left over, so it goes on top. So when I'm looking at this. I'm looking between negative 1 and negative 2. And I'm going to put 12 spots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, that is 11, and this is 12. We're going to change it. Give me a second. Ah! Eraser. And back to my pen. So this is my negative 2. Right, so this is my distance between them. I'm going to put them now into um, negative 1, and I'm going to change it to 12. So I'm going to do 2 times 6. I'm going to do 1 times 6. Okay. And I've got negative 1 and 1 fourth, so I can do 4 times 3 to get 12. And I'm going to do 1 times 3. And I've got negative 1. Again, 6 times 2 gives me 12. 5 times 2 gives me 10. And I can place this now in negative 1 and 3 twelfths would be 1, 2, 3. It would be right here. Negative 1 and 6 twelfths would be right here. And negative 1 and 10 twelfths would be right here. And this helps us also see that, remember, 0 is over here. Um, which order is closest to 0? So my negative 1 and 3 twelfths, again, is the biggest. My negative 1 and 10 twelfths is the smallest. Okay. It still puts us in the same order, negative 11, 6, negative 1 and 1 half, and negative 5 over 4. Again, um, we like you to choose the way that works best for you because we all do learn different and certain things make sense to some of us better than others and the other way makes better sense and it's, it's all about what's easiest for you to understand. So um, we're going to go ahead and spend um, some time today working on this in class.